Okay, we're standing in the Watt Tarvel Undertaker in Tombstone, Arizona, where it's included several times in your book because a, a lot of stuff has happened here. Talk, talk a little bit, a little bit about that. I can't describe strongly enough what this place means to me, and I could tell you two years ago it would just be a tourist attraction for me. The evolution, step, the evolutionary steps I've taken in this building in my sensitivity, energy sensitivity, where it's all energy. We're still back to the idea that it's all energy. That's the engineer in me. The steps I've taken in this place and the people I've met and touched in this place, the lives I've affected in this place, and the paranormal entities that have made themselves known to me have put me on a path that I should be on. The experiences, the incredible guests and residents that are in this building that come to talk to us, that will spend hours talking with people if they're willing to be spoken to, have been so meaningful to me and it gave me insights that I didn't understand. I'm still learning. I'm still learning on how these things work, how to interact, how to read, uh, discuss with the entities here. But this was the place where, as I mentioned in the book, the declaration of my sensitivity really came out. And I was afraid. I didn't want to speak to anybody about it. I didn't want to talk about it. I didn't want to think, experience any of it. Finally, I had to face myself because no matter what I did, it didn't mean it went away. It didn't mean I stopped doing it. I continued to want to do it, but I was afraid. And I was afraid of the unknown. And this place showed me a lot of those fears were unnecess unnecessary because I drove my intention to overcome them. In the same way that I was afraid of them, I finally told myself, wait a minute, this is why I'm here. This is why I come to this place. This is why I'm in this building. It was the founding place of what I guess I'll call my paranormal sensitivity. And you've now become a part of the Sister Paranormal Investigators. Stacy and Nora here in Tombstone have opened their arms as part of family to you now. Talk a little bit about that relationship and the morgue here. The relationship continues to grow and I continue to find ways that there are reasons for my being here along with reasons for us having met. And I can tell you less than two years ago I wouldn't have said anything around it was meant to be. Those words wouldn't come out of my mouth. I am driven by my own free will. I'm in control of my own fate. But this journey I'm on has showed me that that is what's meant to be. Just being in control of my own fate doesn't mean it's not meant to be. In fact, that just means I'm doing what I believe I should and will do. For the sisters here, we've become true family. Uh, we live in our, each other's lives even from 3,000 miles away. I talk to them almost once a day sometimes. And we're also now exploring our synergy. Uh, Stacy, and I just mentioned it a few minutes ago, is more empathic than she knows. She has some things that she wants to work on and she's very eager to do that. And those are some of the things I want to help with. Don't ask me how I help, I just know I can. It's another one of those things I can't explain. Nora is an incredibly powerful medium whom I've helped with other issues. And I've never really experienced that kind of psychic connection with a person that shows so much more synergistic strength. Individually, she's stronger than I am together. How do you instinctively tell somebody the amazing potential you have standing next to someone in that kind of energy sensitivity realm? The morgue itself has started to talk to me. Um, I'll give an example of driving here one day, I started feeling the contact, which is another thing I never did before. I started feeling the contact of the residents here a hundred miles away. One of the most amazing things 
was that while I was out of the room, there was a technical uh, spirit box session, which is a, a, a internet hopping uh, manner in which the spirits, the residents here can speak to you through the internet uh, radio channels, where they said, well, the question was, did you know Jeff was coming? The response was, I did. And the next thing you heard was, he does Reiki. I don't know how they would know this. It doesn't really matter because I'm still delving into the why. But to have that kind of connection from 100 miles away for entities that you, I'm experiencing only psychically, I would have said I was crazy two years ago. Now I'm crazy not to continue to, uh, to explore and what I can actually do with this. And the morgue itself has just become that's more and more special after I just sent a Reiki session on an eight-year-old girl with an ear infection who was so feverish she was ready to pass out when she came in here to the point after half an hour she was smiling and laughing, ready to have something for dinner and ready to go to sleep. And she felt all of the universal balls of light that I channeled into her to help the virus that was infecting her ears. I cannot say enough about the connection I now have to this building and all the residents here, including the sisters. What would you say to people that are watching or that hear this and say, I think you are crazy? I'd have to say good, because I am. I don't think this, you think, <laughs> I can't explain how I do these things. I know that I can repeat it. I know that I can share it. I know that I can help other people experience it. The why, I think it'll come. But until you experience it yourself, give it a try. My message would be, don't shortchange yourself. Even if you think it's crazy, never happened, fake, give yourself the chance to prove it. You might be surprised.